welcome Dr. Janet Cole, Regents Professor of Horticulture. Janet, I'm really interested in your integrated pest management project here because it focuses on the home gardener. It does, and it's been a really fun project for us to do. We've been able to bring together vegetable gardening with flower gardening, and of course that's what home gardeners like to do. And so um, what we're trying to do is integrate the two types of crops, which you don't see very often in right. a home garden. and work with that and bring in some of the insects and in doing that try to avoid using some of the insecticides in the home garden. Why the focus on the home gardener instead of uh, a producer? Well, really it's it's been found in several studies that home gardeners are really the ones that most often will misuse pesticides. Mm -hmm. And part of that's because most home gardeners can go to the big box stores, they can buy it over the counter and get whatever they want and they figure, well, it must not be bad because I can just go to the store and buy it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them think that if a little bit is good, like the label said, more's better. Right. And so what happens then is they apply they over apply. Right. And so that over application causes environmental issues, mm -hmm. it can damage their plants, it can run off into the drainage systems mm -hmm. and back into the water supplies or seep into the groundwater supplies. And so any way that we can encourage them not to use so many pesticides is going to be helpful to the environment. And of course not every consumer is the same, but, but studies have found that consumers in general is where a lot of our environmental contamination comes from. Okay. Well, it's a really good focus then for this it project. It is, it is. Now the research itself kind of draws upon the idea of companion planting, right? It does, mm -hmm. it does. And what we've done is we've tried to pick Oklahoma native flowers mm -hmm. as our attractants mm -hmm. and then put that together with some common vegetable plants that would be found in home gardens. So we've got paired plots uh -huh. um, in such a way that we've got flowers around mm -hmm. our vegetables in one plot and then the the similar plot would be the vegetables without the flowers. Okay. And what we've tried to do is put the plots far enough away from each other that they don't interact and right. you know attract the insects to the wrong place mm -hmm. um, but close enough that we have the same environment for both plots okay. and that's been one of our big challenges is you know how far apart do we put them or how close together do we put them where you're not having an effect uh, yes from the flowers. exactly so exactly the crops we have are tomatoes uh, they're up pretty well uh-huh some of these have been recently seeded they have so. we've got yellow squash okay um, we've got okra and we've got cow peas okay and all of our flowers are perennials mm -hmm. um, they're Oklahoma natives so we have purple cone flower mm -hmm. we've got blanket flower mm -hmm. uh, we've got coreopsis and then we've got Solidago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Excellent. Now, what kind of results? I know this is uh, early on in the study. Is. What are it you is. seeing so this, far? This is our third year for the project, but mm -hmm. our second year for this setup. Okay. And so we're really into the first year of seeing the flowers do really well and come yeah. back into the second year. Mm -hmm. But what we found last year was that we actually did have greater yields from our vegetable plots. Now, we're not far enough along to know if it was statistically different, right. but the numbers at least were a little bit greater in our cow peas, our okra, and our squash. Last year, as you know, was a terrible year for gardens. I don't think anybody had tomatoes. And to we didn't have any tomatoes, so we don't know about those. Yes. But. And then when we're looking at the insects that are being attracted to this, you're looking at uh, pollinators. We're but looking at pollinators also predators. and also predators. So, mm -hmm. so we're looking really at two groups. We mm -hmm. want the pollinators so that they actually pollinate the vegetable crops for us and give us greater yields. But we want the predators because those are the ones that feed on the crops and lower the quality. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know that lady beetles feed on aphids. Right. Well, this year's been a pretty good year for lady beetles. So, um, we're looking at bringing in those mm -hmm. types of, of insects so that we can reduce some of the 
the pests right. that damage our crops. And those are the pests that people would be applying chemicals exactly. for Exactly. Anyway. Uh huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What well, part of this research you've been working with the master gardeners? Tell we us have. About that. We mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. um, this. Let me go back just a oh, little yeah. bit. Um, this experiment or this research started out as a cooperation between three different departments on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, Eric Rebeck from Entomology is our lead researcher, and Jeanette Steets from Botany works with pollinator insects. So Eric kind of works the parasites and predatory insects, and then Jeanette works the pollinators. Brian Kahn in our department mm -hmm. as our vegetable specialist, and I as the ornamental specialist then come in on the plant side. Um, this project was initially funded by the Institute for Sustainable Environments on campus with seed money that would get the project started, get some preliminary information, and then allow us to go after bigger grants right. that would further mm -hmm. fund the project. Those bigger grants that we've been working toward are to train master gardeners. Okay. And so the way that we have used them is as volunteers in helping a little bit with maintenance, but more so with harvesting and looking at our sticky cards and identifying some of the insects and really getting some of the data for us. And that way we can train them in insect identification, in damage that insects do, in what insects are predators for other insects and so on. And so it really expands their knowledge and they are, as you know, our ambassadors, not only to the public, but also to other master gardeners. Absolutely. And so what they're learning, they're excited about. And they're you know, letting other master gardeners, as well as the public, know what's going on out here and know what they're learning. And so it's been a good educational tool as well as a research tool for us. It's a really interesting, unique project. It is. And I'm excited to see such diverse groups come together. Yeah, and it's exciting. Cause. It's exciting to see everybody working together for a common goal and something that's actually working. You know, when you start a research project, part of the research is you don't know what's going to happen. And this is one that's actually working like we had hoped that it would. And we've been able to bring in a lot of people to make that happen. Okay. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you, Kim.